I think the days of unregulated derivatives are over. Pre-crisis, derivative markets were largely, particularly over-the-counter derivative markets, were largely unregulated. There's now requirements about the way derivatives are traded, how they're cleared, how much collateral must be posted, and so on. I think exotic, highly structured derivatives will, to a large extent, disappear. I think the distinction between over-the-counter and exchange-traded derivatives will largely disappear. If you look at the changes that are happening in the over-the-counter market, most of the change, and most of the new regulations are concerned with the over-the-counter market, those changes are actually making the over-the-counter market more similar to the exchange-traded market. And I think if we, if we fast forward 10 years, I think there'll be very little difference between the two markets. Over the last few years, for instance, let me go back to the misallocation. We've seen a 14 percentage point growth in the number of positions. From 2007 to 2011, we've seen the number of physicians grow three times the uh, growth of the population of Canada. Uh, we've seen the number of nurses grow by 10%. Now, I'm not saying that is a, a bad thing, uh, but it's really very interesting. And what we have to note is that physicians represent 2% of the population of Canada. Nurses represent 10% of the population of Canada. So if we start to imagine mismatching of resources or changes of resources, we're in, in for some interesting discussions. Now for the optimism. What do we need? Uh, I think we, we need, for a little while longer, prolonged budget deficits, which will focus our attention. We need changing incentives and payment systems, which we are starting to see, and we're starting to create those pseudo market pressures in the health system. And with that, better accountabilities and controls, uh, and that means new governance. Uh, we're going to need an openness uh, to new technologies. And by new technologies, I mean new technologies to the health system, which have been uh, available in virtually every other sector for 10 and 20 years. Uh, we will need changes in what care is delivered, uh, and that's going to have to be uh, influenced by the evidence. And we've got tremendous computing power to determine what we ought to be doing. And I hope I never hear again what I heard on this stage last week in front of 300 people by a very uh, well-regarded mid-career physician. And he said, I'm not concerned about IBM's Watson uh, competing to replace my professional judgment. Hmm. Well, I'm concerned that he's not concerned about that. <laughs> uh, because I'd like to see Watson sitting beside that physician and influencing the decisions he makes. When faced with two alternative systems, conventional finance and Islamic finance or Sharia compliant uh, finance, rather than choose one at the expense of the other, integrative thinking, and what's amazing is this is what we actually see happening, is we actually see in the aftermath of the financial crisis, banks and organizations that followed Sharia principles performed much better than conventional. And this is why in the aftermath of the financial crisis, all of the major media, including the New York Times, wrote up the course that we now have at the Rotman School because people want to understand what is it about that different way of doing things that allowed banks and financial institutions that have that way of doing business to perform better than the conventional way, the way that we do things. When I look ahead and think, you know, what is the, the, the next big thing for, for business, and particularly for Canadian business, I think that what has to be the next big thing is really kind of the end of US hegemony in terms of, particularly in terms of the economy, right? The US has dominated the global economy for so long and Canadian business sitting next door to that behemoth has relied to a dramatic extent on the US market as both a source and as a market for products and for technologies, etc. And that's, you know, that's served Canada very well, but we have to, and everybody talks about the end of kind of the US era, and some people see this as a great threat in terms of they see the, the US going down, and oh, this must mean that China is, is going to like take over the world, etc. And of course, that's not. Um, uh, the reality of the global economy. But what is the reality of the global economy is that we're looking towards much more of a kind of a multi-centric global economy 
as opposed to one that, where the U.S. Is, is still kind of the, the main driver. What does that mean? Well, of course, it means that as Canadian businesses, we have to, rather than just knowing that in our heads, we have to really understand that in our gut and start actively integrating and really embracing integration into that global economy. Big challenge in India is infrastructure. The roads aren't great. Uh, so if you take your Western view of the company, which is uh, this organization that manufactures stuff at point A and distributes it on road and truck and ship to points B, C, D, and E, uh, that's got to change. Why do we need to manufacture everything at point A? Why can point A not simply be a knowledge hub or an intellectual hub? Uh, and can we then create clusters of local manufacturing cells all across the country? That's a fundamentally different way of thinking about the organization, right? And I think that's the kind of thinking we need to embed. The other uh, s similar idea is the notion of innovation. Right? So in, in, the, in the Western world, we have a very unique definition or a unique sort of way of thinking about Innovation. We talk about the fact that innovation happens when you loosen constraints and you reduce the cost of failure and you give people the freedom and so on and so forth. Uh, but let's look at Indian innovation for a, for a minute, right? Uh, Indian innovation happens in the opposite set of circumstances. Cost of failure is high. Uh, you know, the constraints are tremendous. Uh, and uh, it's not that people actually have the freedom to do whatever they want. They're, they're given 24 hours to come up with a solution, and that's that. Uh, and, and that's, you know, these constraints have kind of given rise to a very unique form of, of innovation that's developed in India and uh, to a lesser extent in Thailand and China. Uh, it's called Jugard innovation or frugal innovation. Jugaad is, a, is an Indian word. It's, a, it's one of those unpronounceable Hindi words, uh, untranslatable Hindi words. Uh, but it loosely translates to making do with the resources that you have at hand to solve a problem. 